Welcome back to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Down in Bermuda on the Nintendo Switch. Starting its life on the Apple Arcade though, was this port necessary and is it worth your cash? Well that is what I'm here to find out so hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here, join our growing family and let's get started. It's a story first off extremely simplistic and it's handled with maybe a 30 second intro to kick things off. And yeah, we're introduced to Milton, a pilot that crashed in the Bermuda some 30 years ago and he has been trapped on a mysterious island ever since. Unable to figure out the puzzles, his only goal is escape, get back to his loved ones and that's basically where we come in. We're going to help him figure out the mysteries of these islands and eventually, hopefully at least, escape this place. That's really it. You can dive a little deeper with hidden photos that are scattered around each island. They give you a little bit more on Milton's history, but otherwise, simple enough stuff. It establishes a goal and basically sends you out to work. So gameplay and first off, thanks to its Apple Arcade roots, this can be played both docked and then handheld with touchscreen. My suggestion, go towards touchscreen if you do pick it up. The dock controls, they're okay, they work, but they're not quite as natural as, you know, a quick tap of the screen. In docked, you see, like all the footage you're actually watching today, that touchscreen interaction is going to be replaced. It's relegated to a cursor that you control with the left stick. The controls docked, gotta say, they took a little while to get used to, but the high level kind of overview to what accompanies this cursor, D-pad, it pans the camera around the island and then the triggers, they zoom and rotate. I would describe it as fine, honestly, but the Switch having that added touchscreen just makes it the best home for the game. And yeah, gotta say, you really do start to feel the difference when you need to, let's say, drag or pull items on screen with the controller in hand. You know, it's like moving the left stick, pressing the button and, and so on. So the aim of the game here, it's simple enough. Each of the six islands, it contains a gateway. It takes you from island to island. Complete them all, beat the game. These gates, they're powered by orbs and most islands, they start you with one immediately after solving kind of think an introduction challenge. These puzzles, they do come in a few different forms. So from matching symbols to rotating pipes to figuring out the order of switches. A few, I will say later in the game, they caught me off guard and the difficulty for sure ramps quickly. But with there only being six islands, that kind of makes sense that it's going to be pretty like fast on the gas. I wouldn't say any were unfair or particularly frustrating, but I did want to put that out there. One challenge then is nearly always associated to finding a huge amount of mini orbs around the island. At points, I gotta say this was annoying as hell as I always seem to be like missing just one at the very end. They got creative with placement though, that is for sure. So do make sure to check all angles. Really, that is it. As I said, there's a few secrets to uncover, keys that kind of unlock secret areas for almost bonus challenges, the photos detailing Milton's past that I mentioned earlier, and then even a map that you can find, it reveals all orb spots on each of the islands. This becomes, I gotta say, particularly useful towards the end game or when you find yourself missing like just one orb. Along the way then expect to meet a few locals and even some enemies, an early example, a sea monster who you will tackle with a cannon or a huge ass spider that you will need to electrocute. These are of course just excuses for more puzzles, but they work as a distraction and I gotta say they also add a little tension to the challenge at hand. The final thing for gameplay, it's a relatively short experience. I beat it in I'd say roughly three hours but mileage will no doubt vary. Some will do it quicker, some much longer. What I appreciated though, it all had a purpose. There was almost no filler here. It's a very specific goal and in turn every action, every challenge that I faced, it felt important and necessary. Overall, look, I was impressed. I enjoyed the puzzles, the world. It had, I gotta say, a lot of charm, more than I expected, and then the few collectibles to extend that runtime, they always came attached to with a reward that felt worth it. I intend to now head back because, as a final note, yes, it's not that long of an experience, but I also didn't 100% everything, so I'm sure I can probably still get a few more hours out of this one. Visually, then, I really did like it. It feels very 
much it was built for a phone, don't get me wrong, in its presentation, but that's not a bad thing. It just means we're looking at like very bright and vivid and it works very well with a smaller screen. You know, the concept of six islands, it leads to six very different themes. Then the low poly kind of style definitely also worked for me. It's just very clean looking. Well, there's not a huge amount happening at these locations also. I do feel like the effort was put in here to make the locations feel very much alive with the locals, the enemies. Then the few minor cuts scenes and photos kind of in keeping with the theme but going for a more cartoonish like style it adds the needed character and I think that was a good choice because it makes you care just that little bit more about saving Milton. The only issue visually the mini orbs that are scattered around they could I've got to say stand out just a little bit more I get it it's designed to like challenge you but sometimes when they were on top of let's say a white background they were a little bit too difficult to make out and that felt almost like a bit of a cheap tactic to heighten that challenge. Audio then, and it's just okay, inoffensive and light-hearted music leads the way and then the occasional sound effect accompanies, let's say, a switch pull, a press, maybe an enemy or a local, you know, just any sort of interaction. Likewise, though, it adds a little life to the locals, though I do think with the little text we did have a bit of face acting, it would have been a nice touch. The one thing I did notice, though, the game can become near silent at moments, like a cutscene for a flashback. I get it's a photo, so it's not going to have anything, but maybe a little extra music or just something to add, you know, add some like feeling to what we are seeing. Overall, this bite-sized puzzle adventure joins the Switch library and I gotta say I liked it. It's simple enough and I think playing alone with friends or with family could lead to a good time. That said, I do think the price point for the length right now just a little bit too high. Also, if you own it already on the Apple Arcade, I'm not sure there's really gonna be a reason to revisit it. For those new though, like me, it has some fun puzzles, some moments of minor frustration, which is typical given the fact it's designed to, you know, challenge your brain. And then surprisingly, and this was what caught me off guard the most, a whole lot of heart. Sure, it's maybe 30 seconds of story total, but Milton's got a lot of charm to him and I absolutely cared about getting him home. The only thing I will say, play touchscreen for the best experience, the game it was built for it, and you will feel that immediately as you try and wrap your head around, you know, controller in hand, you're trying to like pan, zoom, and move the cursor all at once. Today, I'm giving Down in Bermuda a good seven out of 10. I don't think puzzle fans will be disappointed. Just don't expect to be lost in this one for too long. And that is it. Will you be adding Down in Bermuda to your library or is this one just, you know, not for you? With that, a shout out then to the patrons of the channel who are just going above and beyond to support Switch Corner helps more than you know. So thank you all so much. If you do want to check that out for yourself, I have linked it in the video description down below. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch as much as we all do here. Join our growing family and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.